Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're the Garso Twins. I'm Britta. And I'm Carly. We would love it if you would subscribe down below. We do a lot of favorites videos. We do a weekly favorite series that's more like lifestyle focus. We used to work in product development and beauty, so we kind of view everything that we review through that lens. If that interests you, yeah. subscribe. And today we have a big video. This is our yearly favorites makeup category. We're doing a separate one for skincare, body care, fragrance, and hair care. Yeah. <laughs> But we feel like we talk at length when we talk about makeup products, so we wanted to just put makeup in one video. So these are the best of the best that we've used all year. Not necessarily products that launched this year, just yeah. products that we reached for this year, so they're not all like brand new products. And we picked, we tried to at least pick one from each category in the past. We would kind of just pick like random favorites, but then I was like, I think we should revert back to so the type of best of beauty that I like watching, I don't know about you, are when they narrow it down to like one per category because then you know it's like an absolute favorite. Yeah. So that's what we did here. True. So we each well, I, I do have two foundations. I have two foundations too. One came so late in the year and I felt like it wasn't fair to, I mean you'll see, you'll hear. Yeah, it's hard to do foundations. Mm -hmm. um, but sorry, you can probably hear Luna jumping around as well, but she's she's leaving. <laughs> uh, anywho, so we each picked one, so we'll try to get through these pretty quick. And I also want to mention that we will link any coordinating like reels down below of us demonstrating these products. We put a lot of time into those. Um, we usually like swatch them, apply them on the face, show them with like a full face of makeup. So that's a better, a more like in-depth per product review if that's what you're looking for. So we'll link all those down below as well. Starting with makeup primer. My selection is the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. I don't even know if you can tell, but I only have like this much left. I've almost gone through the whole tube. And the reason I picked this is because I had really enjoyed the L'Oreal um, Professional Studio Secrets Primer that Jen Phelps raves about. But that one is like spackling your face. It's so thick. So it's not something I could use every day, even though it did look make my pores look non-existent. And this one I feel like is just really suitable for every day. It's a really thin texture. It's really easy to just put in the T-zone. And it just adds like a smooth canvas for makeup on top but it doesn't feel heavy on the skin and it's only like ten dollars so I love this stuff okay mine looks despicable this is the Merit great skin serum with serum primer what is it called yeah I think and this comes in a glass bottle and I don't know what happened but I went to pick it up from the cap and usually the cap has like a pretty tight seal on that product but mine like dislodged from the cap and the whole thing went well, to the you floor. you should never really pick it up from the cap. Yeah I mean I just like have no space in my bathroom so it was just a whole thing but the whole thing fell on the floor. It's a glass bottle so it broke everywhere. It was a disaster but I was able to pick up like keep some that was left in the bottle and put it in this plastic so I just like shake it up. Um, I'm gonna have to repurchase it though but this is such a beautiful product because it's a um, bi-phase product, so like oil and water phases. And so you shake it up before you use it and the oil kind of like, it's like an emulsion into the water. And when you, I just use a little bit and like pat it on my face. And because it has that light, very lightweight oil, I feel like it's just such a good base for any like, I don't know, not drier foundation. I wouldn't use this with a dewy foundation though. But anyone with a natural finish or like matte, finish because it just leaves your skin lightly like dewy without being too dewy. I hope yeah, it's so good. It's not well. greasy. Yeah, like it's not greasy and it's More not like a dry heavy. oil. It's so lightweight, but it leaves your skin with like the most perfect dew for foundation to go on top. So I love this stuff and I'll have to get the jar, the the like um component is so beautiful too, the bottle. So I'll have to get a new one so I don't have to keep staring at this. Foundations was super easy for me. I had to pick two because I used them equally, I would say. But first up, to no surprise, is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint. I'm actually almost out of this. I need to buy another bottle. This we've been using forever. We've mm -hmm. talked about it so many times. Um, it goes on with a doe foot. It's pretty thick. It's silicone based, so it has that like moussey silicone texture. And I just draw it on my face, use a brush. It's the most like natural looking plump up your skin foundation. Foundation. This would be my number one pick probably, but I use this just as much as the Kosas Revealer Foundation. I love that this has SPF 25 and it's a mineral sunscreen. And it just, this is also kind of a thicker texture. Yeah. So I feel like those tend to like plump up the skin instead of settling into lines like yeah. some thinner foundation. I wouldn't say the Neutrogena has a silicone texture because that's usually slippy and thin. It's definitely like thicker. No, it's, yeah, it's thick, but I think. 
think it's sil moussey silicone. -y. It's like moussey. I think it's very silicone forward. I mean, it's based in dimethicone, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Like way more silicone -y than this. Mm -hmm. This feels like a classic, like thicker foundation. Um, anyway, and this one is just really good. It's like a nice medium coverage. I, this has more coverage than this. And like I said, I love the added benefit of sunscreen. It has a nice, like natural finish. It's not matte, but it's not super glowy, especially when you set it with a powder. It just looks like skin. So I love both of these. They're amazing. I also put revealer concealer as my most worn foundation. Yes, because we both bought it at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely, and we are both saying I use this so much this year and I still have some yeah. left. So I don't even understand how that's working and expires in January in January. So, oh um, shoot, I didn't even check. Yeah, so good thing that Oh, mine expires in August. Weird. Oh, mine's Jan. Oh. Um, so good thing that I am almost done with it, but it's a great foundation, but I recently and I hate putting recent things in the video, but I had to talk about it because it's definitely been replaced by my Glossier foundation because they have a similar finish where like Berta said, it's more of a natural finish and it's not too dewy or too matte but the glossier is slightly more matte and i and it's way more lightweight and that's just like the biggest difference for me i love them both but i think because of the what um yeah it's zinc oxide in here yeah. because of the zinc oxide it definitely has a heavier feeling on the skin yeah. it's not heavy I don't know how to, I don't want to say anything bad about this because it is a really good foundation, but like when I started using the Glossier, I was like shocked at how weightless it felt on my face and I just prefer that in a foundation. Um, so I want to say it is more, more matte. It is more matte. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I like that. I feel like I tend to like matter foundations these days because of like my larger pores and whatnot. It kind of like blurs them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept reaching for this over this. So I had to mention it, but this is a really solid foundation. If you have drier skin, I think you'd like the Kosas more mm -hmm. for sure. I have, haven't heard anyone that has dry skin review this, but I can't imagine it would be yeah, dry, like really dry skin. Um, Which one are you wearing today for reference? Glossier. I'm wearing Neutrogena for reference. Mm -hmm. Concealer. This was so easy for me. The Fit Glow Concealer. I feel like I owe Kate, State of Kate, my life for recommending this because I've gone through several tubes of it. It's so expensive and I never thought I'd be that person that would spend like $40. Well, I always use her coupon code. I'll link that down below or list it down below because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, so you can always save 20% off with her code. But it is worth every penny. It has a really thick texture. Again, she talks about this when she reviews this product too, but because it's so thick, similar to how I was describing like the Neutrogena foundation or even the Kosas, the glossy is pretty thick too. Yeah, it tends to like not settle into lines. Something thin is gonna like settle into those cracks and something moussey and thick is going to plump up the lines and like fill them in and then sit on top of the skin, you know what I mean? So I feel like this does a perfect job of it's very thick and it also has a bit of a tacky texture. So it really stays where you put it. So you put it under your eye I let it sit for a little bit. I blend it out with my sponge and it doesn't migrate. Like some thinner concealers, I feel like when you go to blend them out, then they come all the way down your cheek. And it's like, I don't want concealer here. I just want it like in the darkest area with the most lines. Um, and so I just love that it makes my under eyes look youthful and more awake. I use the shade C2.5 um, and yeah, I really can't get enough of this stuff. It's the best concealer I've ever used in my entire life. Oh, and I will say it has, it doesn't have a matte finish. It definitely, like I said, it has a tackiness to it. So it is a little bit on the, I don't want to say glowy or dewy, but it has a little bit of a sheen to it. It doesn't dry down fully, which I like because it makes, like I said, the under eyes look healthy. Um, but just keep that in mind. It's not one of those that dries down to like a matte finish. Okay, mine is the Colfi concealer. I don't have it here, but I had to put it as my number one because I looked back and I bought three like bottles of it this year and I have it I had it in the shade ice ice berry but I do believe since I last purchased it they have expanded their shade range because it was a little bit light for me mm -hmm. but I loved that concealer I'm just using other ones right now I'll probably repurchase it in the future but I loved it especially in the summer because it makes a beautiful foundation too and I found myself yeah, yeah oftentimes just putting it all over my face as foundation like a really lightweight natural looking face um in the summer time because I just didn't want a heavy foundation on and then it also works really well as a concealer it's just a great like creamy 
um, easy to blend formula. It dries down a little bit dewy, but not not like pearly, not like luminous. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not matte. It's just a really beautiful formula. I think that it's so easy to use and easy to blend. Anyone would like it. Um, right now, I'm using the Live Tinted, which is a little bit more coverage under my eyes, which I really like. But I loved the like convertible aspect of the Colfi that you could use it as a foundation too. Yeah, that one was really nice as a foundation. It's really good. Oh, I want to mention. Sorry, this is super full coverage. Just want to mm -hmm. mention that. Yeah, the Colfi's more like medium. Mm -hmm. Sorry, forgot to mention this. The Tarte oh, <laughs> CC Corrector, we have the shade Light Medium. We've tried them all, I feel mm -hmm. like. And this is the best one. It's super thick and tacky. Like, it kind of reminds me of this, but in, like, a solid form. Um, and so another, like, kind of similar situation. Because it's so thick, it stays where you put it. You can easily pat it under the eye. I can even get away with wearing this if I'm just putting sunscreen on and, like, my dark circles are a little dark. I'll Same. put, like, a tiny amount and just pat it right on the inner corner, and it really helps to to make your dark circles disappear. Because it's not as peach pinky as some of the yeah. other correctors. It has a sort of neutral tone to it. So yeah, I've worn this alone without concealer on top too. And you don't really notice that it's pink. Yeah, and it's thick and uh, again, like that kind of dewy, tacky yeah. situation. Um, but it's not super drying and it wears really well under foundation. It's just the best one. Yeah. Like we've, we've tried it all. many times. It's the best one. Powder. Uh, we only use so the Coast House Cloud Set. I don't think I've tried a new powder in here. I tried that Jaclyn one, but I and I liked it, but I realized I can't use a loose powder. I don't know. I know people love. Oh yeah, because the one size one was nice too, but I just don't like one loose powder. Yeah, like this is so much easier. I just use a powder puff. I've gone through so many, yeah. but it just recently broke when I was traveling. Um, we use the shade Feathery. It's so good. It's a baked powder, so it's super finely milled. It's it doesn't ever make your makeup look cakey, especially if you finish with like a setting spray. Mm -hmm. Um, it it's not like super it doesn't make my makeup last longer I would I say. I know I would say it's more like a finishing powder. Yeah like it just kind of sets all your powder products together. It makes like your but bronzer blush. But it also blush. helps to blur. Yeah. Yeah. Which Blurs, is what I like sure. about it. Mm -hmm. It's the best. It's so good. Okay. Moving on to cheek products for bronzer. Bronzer is like I would say our favorite category. Yeah. So we each picked a cream and a powder bronzer. For my cream bronzer, I selected the Rose Ink Cream Bronzer. This is the shade Seychelles, um, which I'll insert a swatch of because I did do a reel trying the Rose Ink products. I've used the Rose Ink Bronzer on our channel so much, but I had the medium shade and it was a little bit too orangey and I recently purchased the darker shade. Um, and I like this one, the tone of it so much more. This is just the best cream bronzer in my opinion. It's such a thin formula. It's thin and has like that powdery matte formula. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear Terry. Um, and so I just put my brush in here and dab it on the cheeks. And because it's so thin, it never feels too thick under powder products. Like I feel like that's what I don't like about a lot of cream products is if they can feel too thick. It's just like adding another layer. This just meshes in with my foundation because it's so thin. It dries down to a powder finish. It looks really natural if you just do like a thin layer, which it's very easy to do. Um, and I feel like not a lot of people talk about this and I am just like flabbergasted by how good this formula is. And it's Rose Ink is like a clean brand. I saw people review it say they loved it, but it dried out super fast. So I would just make sure the cap. I know. Is. Yeah. So I, so I think I've mentioned this before with the medium shade when I had it. it I did hit pan on it. I was almost done. But the liner uh, on the cap fell out and then it wouldn't t like air or like what is it called? Um, well, it's supposed to be airtight. I'm airtight. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't lock in place and then it dried out completely, which I was going to repurchase it anyway. So it didn't bother me. But I remember Kathleen Lights got this and she talked about how hers dried out immediately. So I guess just make sure to keep this piece in there. Even if it falls out, like find a way to get it back in there so that no air can get in here because it is such a matte formula. It definitely can dry out. I can see that happening. Okay, mine is a Rara Beauty um, bronzer stick in the shade Bright Side. So I had Happy Soul when they first launched this product, and then this year, I think it was this year, they came out with the shade Bright Side, and it was a more neutral tone than Happy Soul, which is exactly what I wanted. And so I bought it immediately, and this is so good. Like Britta said, she prefers a thin cream formula, same with me. When they first launched this product, they talked about how it was like a liquid bronzer in a stick, and I think they should keep up with that messaging because that's exactly what it feels like to me. Like, it's so thin that it just, like, it's so weightless on the skin, and it can blend out to be, like, the 
thinnest layer and it really shocks me out of all the cream bronzers I've ever tried this one is the thinnest and it just blends so effortlessly it has this beautiful like kind of like soft matte finish but because it's so thin it kind of like takes on some dewiness if your skin is a little dewy. Well, I think this, like, mine is like a powdery matte. That's more emollient. Like, it's way easier yes, to blend. Yes, it's creamier but when I marry it. It's yeah. creamier when it goes on and when you blend it, but it does dry down. Like, when you, here, like, I put it on my hand and, like, sort of blend it out, and then you can start to, like, I think when the volatiles go away, you can start to feel, yeah. like, the powderiness. So it dries down to, like, a powder format. I will say that when I first got Happy Soul, like, when this product launched, it was more matte when you would even draw it on. I don't know if they made a formula change when they re when they launched the new shades because it definitely is more emollient now than it was. It doesn't bother me because I do feel like it dries down to like the same finish, but I did notice that. So I was curious if they changed the formula. Um, I've used this so much and I have like only a little bit left, but I'll probably repurchase it time and time again because it's, it's just great. Reedy's really, pretty affordable. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. They and I think it's made in Italy. Yeah, which Italian formulas are pretty expensive. Okay, powder bronzer was also really easy for me because I've only really repurchased. Aside from you guys know the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronzer, I still miss that, and that was like something I repurchased constantly. R.I.P. But the Ilia Drawn In Night Light Bronzing Powder is I've repurchased this, and I can't. I can only say that of this and the Bare Minerals. And I just love this. It's a talc-free, really smooth, powdery formula that just blends really effortlessly on the skin. It's the perfect amount of pigmentation in my opinion. It is pretty pigmented, but it's not over the top. Um, like I like, I love like baked bronzers and I love like um, the Victoria Beckham bronzing brick, mm -hmm. but there's something about this. The tone of it just looks so good on at least my skin tone and it's like a really good in between. It's kind of a more like neutral bronze I would say. So you can kind of like almost contour with it. I'm wearing it today obviously and I'll leave that reel down below of me trying this on, but it's just like one of the smoothest powder formulas I've ever tried and I can't get enough. It's so good. I will say I wish they still had the mirror in here because the mirrors mm -hmm. were so nice, but I know they're expensive. And I think environmentally people are Yeah, that's true. Too. Mine has a mirror. <laughs> this is um, the NARS bronzer. They relaunched it, I believe, this year um, in a talc free version. So I got the original shade Laguna 02, which is the original Laguna, but now they have many shades, which is so great because they didn't before, which was insane. Um, and I love it. I think I like it more than the original formula. I will say O2 is a little dark, but this formula is so like buildable, which is what I love about it. You can go in with the lightest layer and it just gives like a touch of color to your cheeks or you can build it up and it'll be like impactful. Like the other day I put on too much and I was like looking at my cheeks like, ooh, I have a There's lot. There's never too much. And I had a lot of bronzer on, um, but I love that about this. It's so flexible because the formula is like so again like thin and just like lightweight and it, you can just be like I don't know like airbrushed on your skin I can't really describe it it also like the original has like the slightest sheen it's not matte but I don't know how to describe it because it has like the most light sheen. I was gonna say if it just feel like talc free in general because mine is kind of like that yes, too. because they usually replace the talc with um, like more matte mica pearls um, and because of that I think mica even if it's like a more matte yeah. pearl it still has a bit of luminosity which i prefer i prefer it too like yeah. but the original formula i will say from what i remember because i used to have that but i got rid of it when it was old um was slightly more luminous like it definitely had some luminosity this one i don't think it'd be obvious unless you were really looking at it but it's not flat matte and that's what i love about it mm -hmm. and the color is perfect laguna yeah, will it forever is so good. be like the best like neutral bronzer in my opinion. It's just so neutral, almost cool, and I don't like it. I think it has a little bit of red in it. Right? Um, maybe like a little bit. It's just I think I see yellow. Yeah, maybe yellow. So I, it just like complements my skin really well, and I've been writing about this all year, and I can't shut up about it. It's so good. We both picked the same blush, Gucci Rosy Beige. Um, this is so good. Again, like a talc-free formula that is, this is pretty hard pressed though. Like Agreed. Com compared to my Ilia bronzer, which is pretty My NARS is hard pressed too. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard pressed. Oh, yeah. But I will so say the NARS has a pressing design, um, which is like when they put oh, the yeah. logo into the powder. So you always have to have it be a little harder when you're doing yeah. that. Yeah. 
Oh, maybe this had that too. I actually it don't did. remember. It did. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so the packaging is faulty. I just gotta say, I dropped it once and like the latch broke and then the pan falls out. So for the that price. That's not, neither of those things have happened to me. Really? Yeah. For the price, Why I just think that's your pretty cling crazy. On? I don't know. I just okay. didn't take it off. Um, that just kind of bothers me because this is like a $50 blush, right? Yeah, it so is I just wish that, like, look at, like, this is not reinforced in the slightest. But isn't it <laughs> refillable or, like, what's the deal there? Oh, um, maybe. There's a hole. Maybe it's refillable, but, like, come on. I but feel like they could have used, like, a round yeah. um, adhesive so at least it took up more instead of just, like, this That's tiny... a very weird glue. Yeah, like, this is weird. So, I've actually never seen that color glue. Uh, <laughs> usually they use, like, a clear glue. Yeah, I have a problem with it. I have, I love the pack the look of the packaging, but, like, for the price, they need to be better about quality But the outside is stunning. Yeah, it's I don't stunning. even know, like, this is, like, enamel of some sort, or maybe it is just plastic. I think it's plastic. And then... This is vac metalized. Yeah. But in a really good way. Like a lot of times this doesn't, it looks cheap. This doesn't. Yeah. yeah but there's some issues. Anyway, getting to the formula. Well, the, the tone of this blush is just so perfect. I feel like it's almost like a mauve nude, would you say? It's a little rosy beige. Yeah. I guess, but I, when I think of beige, I kind of think yeah, of. Yeah, we say the name. It's rosy beige. Yeah. When I think of beige, I almost think of something pretty warm and peachy. I don't yeah. know why, but, and this isn't peachy all to me. It's just, no. it is rosy. Yeah, it's very rosy. On our skin, it does pull a little bit warmer, I'd say. Yeah. And like it looks in the pan or yeah. like I've seen other people swatch it and it looks really cold, cool toned, which is what I usually am after. Yeah. But the, the light warmness that comes out is like more mauve like purpley blue yeah. in my opinion. Mauve and, um, I feel like that just complements my skin. Yeah, same. And again, similar to these other powder formulas we're talking about. It's so good. Yeah, it's so it has like that slight luminosity. It's a very thin powder formula. It blends really well. It never looks patchy. No, you could put a lot of this on and I don't even think it would look crazy. Yeah. It just has that like beautiful, like almost like skin like a quality to yeah. it. Yeah. I want the bronzer so bad because Me too. the blush is so good. But then I'd be I feel like <laughs> I'd be like let down. Just re glue it in. Yeah, I do. Because it I actually wasn't having this problem until I just sat down. Like I feel like I pushed it back in there and I need to like refocus on this later. Yeah. Um it, it's beautiful. I know it's so expensive, but it's by far my most used blush. Totally. It's the one I keep all of these I keep in my everyday mm -hmm. makeup. Next we got highlighter. So mine is the Rose Ink Cream Highlighter in the shade Glancing. We bought this last year. Yeah. This one is refillable. It has yeah. like the two mm -hmm. holes on the bottom and you And can, I love the packaging. Yeah, you can repurchase the inside. As you can see, I've hit pan on this and this is just a really unique formula. It's definitely, okay, I like, like a drier texture. Yeah, like I usually don't like dry or like thick anything. Like as we've been saying, like oh, I love how thin this is. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I do really like this highlighter. It definitely has like a thicker drier texture. Yeah, you know, it's now that I'm thinking of it, it's so funny because I feel like their blushes are thicker and dewy yeah. and then the bronzer is thin and matte and this is right in between. Yeah, that's it's like true. thicker but matte. Yeah, but I think because when it blends out, it just has like a really natural looking sheen. Like the pearls aren't huge. Yeah. It definitely looks more natural. It, I just really like it and I reach for it literally like every time I do my makeup. Um, and the shade Glancing, I think it's the third deepest, but um, we, so, someone on TikTok had talked about this. Elizabeth. Yes, mm -hmm. and she had lighter skin and she loved it. So we both got it and I'm really glad because I don't like it when highlighters look too like pearly or light. Like I like it when they're almost a bit deeper because I never want, I want like the um, illumination and like lightness like wet look. to come from the pearls. I don't want it to come from like putting a light color product on my sk already light skin, if that makes sense. So I always look for tones that are like a little bit deeper, not deeper than my skin, but you get what I'm saying. So I think my favorite thing about this is the color. I really love it. Yeah, they do shade really well. Yeah, so this is great. Um, I am really craving a new highlighter. So if you guys have recommendations, I would love well, to Well, you have to try them. the Bare Minerals one. I didn't put it in this video because we I just got it. But, okay. Um, I That's my favorite cream for sure, but I had to pick the Ilia Decades highlighter. This is for sure expired, mainly because this is the only highlighter I can use on my inner corner and on my face. The Bare Minerals one, what is that shade? The, the 
I just started using. That one is a little too deep to use on my inner corners, and I like a little bit of highlighter just to brighten up my eyes, and I feel like I get compliments on like inner corner highlight a lot, and it's always this, and then I also can wear it on the face, and it doesn't look too icy. That's why I can play with highlighters. Like, that's what, what I'm saying. Paying. Yeah. Like, it looks kind of like a stripe or like too icy, and it, I don't want to, I want it to just look like one. I want it that's to like mesh I together. I don't want to buy a shade that's even lighter than my skin. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make sense to yeah, me. Yeah, like, it, even in the pan, this almost looks gold, but it's like a deep champagne, I would say. Yeah. And so, I just love that it's kind of like one and done. Like, when I'm traveling, I'll bring this because I can use the inner corner and on my face. And the formula, again, with like the other Ilia powder, it, it's not, their powders aren't super hard pressed. So, I feel like it's just really finely milled particles that blend out really well. And especially when you put like setting spray on top, it just meshes into the skin so effortlessly. It like sets down those loose, um, like particles. So, for single eyeshadow, I picked the Lucent Cream Shadow by Moira in the shade Comet. Um, again, I'll link the reel down below where you can see me applying this to the eyes. But my favorite thing about this, um, well, I just, quick backstory. If you remember, there were two ColourPop Super Shock shadows that we used to love. Snake Bite was one of them. It was kind of like this, like a Snake Bite Forever. I, yeah. I still have it. Ugh, it's so good. It was like I a don't bronzy use it, shade. Yeah. It didn't have any glitter in it, and it was so good for every day. And then we also had Truth, which was a satin in their range that was almost like a creamy shade that was so easy to just put on the lids. And I was missing both of those so much. And then Kate talked about this in the shade Comet, and I had a few of these, but I thought they all had glitter in them, and this one does not. It's just like a deep champagne, like a bronzy champagne shade that is so easy. Like, on my normal everyday makeup, I will just put like a like matte bronze type of um, shadow in the crease and then throw this on my lid and it looks like a makeup look but it's not really it's so easy and it just gives like the slightest sheen um, without using glitter like I love glitter eyeshadow but I don't want it every day mm -hmm. so I love this so much and it's like eight dollars and then for my palette I picked the Glossier palette in almond another state of Kate for I feel like lots of these in this video are her Rex um, because this is the one palette I travel with it's, again, I feel like these tones would just complement any skin tone. I just use the matte in the crease, and then I don't really use this one as much, but this glitter shade, it just has really finely milled glitter um, that aren't, they're not super visible on the eyes, like if you can tell I'm wearing it today. It just looks like a full makeup look, and it's literally two shades, and that's kind of what I'm after these days. Like, I don't want to, like, spend a million years Wait, doing Wait, did you say what it was? It's the Glossier Almond Eyeshadow Palette. It's the Monochromes Trio in Almond. Um, and these are really affordable too. I want to get another shade because I do like I've the always formula. wanted the Cool Town one and it's always sold out at Sephora.com. Oh, weird. I don't understand why. I mean, it might be the Teak one. That one? No. Mm -hmm. I think it's something else. Yeah, they have like really beautiful shades and I just like this formula. This one almost feels like a cream, so I use like a glitter glue just to make it last longer, but it's so good. Both of these are great. I didn't have a favorite eyeshadow palette, but this I wore so many times this year. I actually am like almost out of it. I need a new one. It's the About Face matte fluid eye paint in the shade cloned and I love this it looks so dark the outside of the component actually matches the colors really well and it looks so dark when it goes on but I feel like I just it doesn't dry super fast which I love in a liquid eyeshadow so I put it in both in the center of the eyes and I usually use like my pointer finger and like dab it kind of all around and it ends up looking really sloppy but then I get a brush and I start by blending the crease and then if there's kind of like excess on the lid I'll kind of like dab the lid with the brush too and it ends up shearing out pretty well like I have it on right now and I don't feel like this shade is too dark for me which looking at the bottle you would think it was and I just love this shade it's such a perfect neutral for me because it's like a slightly warm brown with some red in it. It's really hard to describe. Like it looks kind of like burgundy brown when it goes on. Yeah, like burgundy-ish. Yeah, but because we have green eyes, I just feel like that like slight red note really brings out the color of my eyes and it doesn't really like knock it along with other makeup. Like it doesn't seem like a neutral you could just throw on every day, but for me it is. And I just really love this. It's by far my most reach for eye product this year. So I had to mention it and I don't feel like they get enough love. Brows was pretty easy. The CoverGirl Brow Pencil is my like tried and true. I love this. It's really inexpensive. I use the shade Honey Brown. I've been using it for years. And then the Kosas Air Brow, um, they sent this to us and I did not think I would like it as much as I do. Uh, I love the brush. It's one of my favorite things. It's like a triangular shape that tapers on the end and it's small enough for my brows that are pretty sparse on the ends. It's just a really nice natural hold. I feel like yeah. it's not 
too stiff. Um, it doesn't have like a weird shininess to it. It's just really nice. Yeah, I got a new one in the holiday kit I bought, so I have this, but I think I was so impressed by the tinted one. Yeah, I like both the airbrow, like the tinted from Kosas. This is so good. If it wasn't so expensive, I would be repurchasing it a million times because it's like that perfect pomade texture that's not too thick, not too thin. It holds really well, but it doesn't leave your brows crunchy and it gives you the most perfect amount of color and it has the same brush as this one. So it's nice and precise so you're not like getting it everywhere when you apply it. Like this is incredible. I don't know yeah. how more people don't talk about it. The clear is too. The packaging but, is so Yeah, the packaging cute. is so cute on both. Amazing on both ends. I didn't pick a brow pencil because I'm kind of indifferent. I could use anything. For mascara, I don't have mine here I, right now. I just reordered, but I rediscovered the Maybelline Colossal Mascara, and that stuff is so good. Like, I don't know why I stopped using it. It's literally, like, $6. It just gives the most, like, nice natural volume. It doesn't flake on me. It's pretty black. It doesn't irritate my eyes. It washes off well. I really can't complain at all. And then I use it in tandem with the Essence um, Lash Primer. I've talked about that a million times. Again, I just reordered that. I ran out of both, so I apologize. But they're both from the drugstore, both incredible. Okay, my favorite is the Rare Beauty Mascara. I love this stuff. I have purchased the small size multiple times this year just because I'm cheap and I don't want to buy the, the full size. And then we went to a Rare Beauty event and we got the full size, and it's just so good. I'll, this too was weirdly wet when we first got it, and in the past I've never had that experience. One of my favorite things about it is how dry the formula is. So now that it's dried out, it's back to how I remember it being, but it literally doesn't smudge on me, which is crazy because every mascara smudges on the outer corner of my eyes, and it's super black. It does a great job separating, adding length and volume, like all of it. It's just such a good mascara. Um, again, Rare Beauty is kind of like more affordable at Sephora. Mm -hmm. So like this whole thing is $20, and I don't think that's awful compared to like the $13 drugstore mascaras that we now have to mm -hmm. buy. Um, so it's so good. Uh, lips was pretty easy for me. For lip liner, Victoria Beckham 02 liner. Oh, you picked a different one. I know. Um, can you believe it? Yeah, this one, it's just a really nice, like deeper, neutral. How would I describe this? Or I, have to, I guess it does have some warmth to it. It does. It has some pink in it. Yeah, it has like warmth. Just yeah. Pink. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think that's pretty warm compared to like probably that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just really does like it says lip definer, it really does just mm -hmm. like define your lips, kind of your lips but better, your lips but darker. So it goes with everything. So I picked that. I have picked Victoria Beckham O2 the past two years, but I have one I use more this year, and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. And I still love that one so much, but this one is slightly more brown, mm -hmm. which I love. And the formula is like really has like a soft edge to your lips, so it's also easy to overline. It lasts really long. It's just beautiful. And yeah, I, this lasts long too. Most woody pencil ones yes, last long. That one lasts long too. Um, I, I think I like them the same, but because I got this this year and I used so much of it, I'm honestly shocked it's not lower because I use it a lot. Um, I love it. I will say, this has like, I don't know how to describe it, but the bullet, well I do know, the bullet is thicker, I believe, than this one. So the Victoria Beckham, you can really sharpen to a point really well. This one you can't. You just can't do it. And I don't love how round the tip gets. It's kind of like harder to be precise. Um, but that's like my only complaint. It's really good. And I used to own Pillow Talk and I don't know why it took me so long to buy Iconic Nude because in my opinion it's way better. Yeah. I mean that one's like the most popular. Yeah. Other honorable mentions are Jaclyn Butter Pecan Lip Liner and MAC Strip Down. Both classics for me. Okay. Lipstick. We love lip liner. That's why it's like so hard. Yeah, it's I one love, of my favorite products. Yeah, a lip. I feel like bronzer and lip are like yeah. my favorite. Uh, Wait, I thought you put gloss on there. I did, but I was going in oh, order. Okay, okay. So Mac Yash, I had to pick. I I feel like I've been using this for literal years. It was an Anna had a recommendation back in the mm -hmm. day, and I just love this. I wear it more than any other lipstick. Like if I just need a new lipstick to throw on, it's always this. I just there's something about the Mac lipstick formula. Like it's so. I don't know. It's, it's like, it's good. It's so good. It's creamy and they're classic. I'm talking about just their regular it's matte. matte. I think, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have like that powder dried on them, like their powder kiss. It's just like a really nice creamy matte. It doesn't migrate outside the lip lines. It's the perfect level of pigmentation. It's a matte lipstick, so yes, it can feel a little drying, but nothing crazy. What <laughs> lipstick bullets always end up looking so weird? Yeah. Like, how I don't does know. she apply it? They always get really sharp. 
I that's because my bottom lip I feel like curves perfectly. Oh maybe. <laughs> it's funny. It is weird. <laughs> um but I repurchased this and I can't say that about a lot of other lipsticks, so I had to pick that. Okay, mine is Merit Aperitif. This launch yeah, Merit lipsticks are so good. So good. This launched in the holiday kit that came out with the last year, and we didn't want to buy the kit just for the red, so we were ecstatic when they launched it as a standalone shade, limited edition, this summer. I'm wearing it right now. To me, this is a perfect summer red. I think it was mm -hmm. very odd that they launched it for holiday because this red is has like a softness to it, a wearability that I feel like people that are scared of reds could wear, and brightness somehow. Like it still does add brightness to your face, and I just think that that's everything I always look for in a summer red where you're just like throwing it on with light makeup. Like I never want like a super bold red lip. For me, holiday reds are like Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon, like something like rich. Yeah, and I think that's red. why people are scared of reds because they think of like pigmented. Yeah, impactful. But that's reds. what I think of when I think of holidays. Yeah. This is literally the perfect summer red, and I hope they bring it back for summer because I hope that other people I feel that like we bought it in the summer. We did. Yeah. Other people that didn't get a chance to experience it can buy it, but I have it on right now. It's just such a beautiful red. I wore it all summer long, into fall. I still reach for it often. It's just a perfect lipstick. There's like nothing bad to say about this. It's yeah. so good. Honorable mentions. Okay. Go to Lisa Aldred Velvet, Velvet Bloom. Bloom because oh my that God. is like I, the perfect summer lipstick. I like it is so it in stunning. Video, but I feel like we got it kind of later in the yeah. year. Yeah. And it's not like something I wear every day. Like I wear this so often. I, did. I wear this a lot, but we're red yeah. people. But yeah. I, and Lisa's, Lisa's lipstick formula is my favorite, too. but the bullets breaking is something that... But Velvet I like. Bloom, I think, to this day, is the prettiest lipstick I've ever experienced. Yeah, like you put it on and just gasp. Yeah. Like, this is... We bought it beautiful. going in blindly. We were like, this is limited edition. And she never launches limited edition Yeah. Shape. We were like, we have to buy this. And then we, we share it. So we got it in the mail and we were like, and oh I have my been god. Buying I feel like I've been trying to use her lipsticks that we have more because they're so expensive and I love the formula so much and I've been using Velvet Affair and then what's like the mauve one we have? Velvet... Oh my god, what is I that one? I, I it's really good. Muse? That. Velvet Muse. Yeah. And I've been using really those a lot too. So in general, her lipsticks are fantastic. I just reach for a Yash more. Yeah. For lip gloss, well we did... This is a lip oil, but like lip gloss. And in general, I gotta say, we hadn't historically been fans of lip gloss. No. But we dived, dipped our toes, if you will, into the lip gloss category this year. And my favorite, which is a recent find, is the In Beauty Project Lip Glaze, um, specifically in Cinnamon Bun, because this is like the prettiest nude shade. And I just love, I know we've like been raving about these, but I love everything about this formula. It has the best, they have the best sense. Yeah. This smells like a cinnamon bun. It's so good. And it doesn't have like a weird aftertaste, kind of like the road um, lip oils or lip treatments do. Like those kind of taste florally, which is kind of strange. Um, I love this giant applicator. It has like the perfect amount of cushion so it doesn't migrate outside of the lips, but it still has that emolliency so you can like rub your lips together. It, they are very sheer, so I'll say if you're looking for something pigmented, this isn't that. But I just like it to put on top of like a lipstick, like I'll put some on right now, just to add a little bit of shine. They're so good. I love the packaging. I love everything about them. Those are so good. We got them pretty late in the year, so yeah. I wanted to mention something I've had nearly all year. It's the Victoria Beckham Gloss in the shade Fizz. I bought the shade Apertivio, I think, last year, and then I really wanted Fizz for the spring and summer, but I ended up wearing it like all year long because it's kind of like this neutral yet cool toned pink. And if you haven't tried the Victoria Beckham glosses, they have like a medium everything. Like they're like a medium pigmentation, a medium shine, medium cushion. Like nothing is too offensive and I feel like everyone would love them because of that. I don't like high shine lip products. Yeah. I feel like that looks weird. It looks weird and unnatural in my opinion. And the same with the lip glazes. Like they just have that medium shine mm -hmm. where it's kind of like making your lip lines look less visible without like bringing a ton of attention to your lips. Yeah. So I love that about these. They have such a good amount of cushion, but it's not like thick where it's like sticky. They're not sticky at all. They're so smooth. The colors are all honestly stunning. I think Victoria Beckham does colors better than any other brand. Um, and so when I wanted Fizz, I was like, I could have gotten like a million of the other shades, but I'm so glad I got Fizz. It's not usually something I would buy, but I wore it so much and I still wear it a lot and it's just great. But I couldn't 
not do this video without mentioning the Naturium lip gloms, the, the Naturium Phyto Glow lip balms. Yeah, they're so good. Because we discovered these this year, they sent them to us, and we were full lord. We think that they're better than like the Summer Fridays, yeah. even though they're so similar to that. Like they're essentially like the same but they're so good and they're so affordable the colors are beautiful um plum i think is my most worn yeah i keep chai in my purse because that yeah, one's like a nude Britta has chai we kind of divided the nude set so i got latte and latte is my second most worn so i wanted to mention it i will say i never had issues with this collection but the new collection the air in the yeah, tube same. i like cannot get the product out oftentimes uh, i think that they i don't know if there's like too much headspace when they crimp the tube something is amiss with this um so i hope they can fix that on the next launch but these are so good like we were just literally shocked by so these so good treatment um i selected the lano lips 12 hour overnight lip mask obviously i need a new tube this is so good anything with lanolin just works really well for my lips like at actually healing dry cracked lips and I like this one because it has a slight vanilla scent to it but I will say it's the same price it's like $18 as the Lano Lips Golden Skin Salve and that one I think you get like double the amount of product but it's unscented so it does have that weird like raw material lanolin smell so I want to try this for the vanilla but I think I'm going to go back to that just because you get more bang for your buck and it's essentially the same formula but this is just it's really similar to the By Beauty Agave Lip Mask if you've ever used that it's so thick and rich I can still feel it on my lips the next morning. It really does like repair dry lips and like nothing else and I just can't get enough. Okay, mine is Aquaphor. I just, I use it the most so I had to include it. I like the little tubes even though I think they're a rip off but they're nice to keep in my purse. Mm -hmm. It's the 10 gram size. Last but not least, nail polish. And this Our pride and joy. <laughs> no surprise. We loved it. Oh, how funny. We're the opposite. Oh yeah. I have on I have on the Chic, Chic, and then I have on... This is the new shit I got. I haven't even used it yet, but Britta used it, and it's beautiful, yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's so nice. It's called Red Rouge. Yeah, and Perfect. Chic is probably my most worn. Carly has it on. It's like a cool toned brown. I always get compliments brown. when I wear it. This color, is, the Red Rouge is like... I keep yeah. staring at her nails. I'm like, yeah, I can't so wait pretty. to repaint my nails. But Dazzle Dry lasts forever on us. Like, yeah. forever meaning... One, oh, one to week. two weeks. Yeah, one to I've two gotten weeks. two weeks out of it before. I don't think I've gotten two weeks with like no chips. But the thing about Dazzle Dry, in my opinion, sorry, it's getting dark, so I hope that the yeah. video looks fine. Um, is that even when it chips, I feel like it just slightly chips off the top. It, you don't get like it's a not huge really like a chip. Yeah, it's you like don't get a, like a huge. It kind of like um, what's it called? Like a. Uh, like it pushes away from the edge. Yeah. But it's not like chipped. So and sometimes, the, my I think that when it starts to wear off is when it like peels away from yeah. my nail mostly. So it never really looks that bad when it's wearing off. Whereas like normal nail polish will just randomly chip off or like, you know, it just doesn't look good. We've never been ones to get manicures like we'd never 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 yeah. do and i think this gives you a manicured look like yes the whole system your nails end up looking almost like gel yeah super even in color the top coat has like this beautiful shine and we don't see any reason to ever use any other nail polish. Yeah, like, it's because so perfect. It lasts so well. It is expensive. Wish, it is it's ex expensive. I think each of these is like 20 something dollars. Mm -hmm. We try to buy them when Amazon has their like, what, quarterly sales that they do because they go on sale a lot on there. I mean, that's when we repurchase like the base coat and the top coat. And I will say, I thought you didn't need step one. Like we went without it for a while. It's like a alcohol treatment to like dry out the nails. And I do think you need it. I, I think, think it so helps too. make it last. So you need the whole set. So we'll link like the starter kit down below. But um, still way cheaper than getting your nails done. Yeah, like I would say we maybe buy a new base coat every like four months. Yeah, but that's because we're sharing it too. Yeah, that's because we're sharing it and it does get like pretty thick. Um, and they have something you can buy to add to it to like thin it out. So you can make it last, but overall we can't. Other nail polish enough. literally would chip on my nails within two days. And yeah. this is no exaggeration. Yeah. For years we were loving painting our nails. We love nail polish, but they would chip so fast that I just got so over it. And yeah. then we discovered Dazzle Dry. We said this last year, but it changed our lives. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a life changing once product. a week and then your nails are always painted because we've loved nail polish since we were little like nails always painted but like Carly said when it chips and then you back then we were so busy like we didn't have time to be painting our nails every three days so then I just went with our nail polish for like a year Same. 
And I'm like, I don't like this. Like, I love having my nails painted. So, here we are. Here we are. Okay, this was so lengthy. If you made it through, yeah. thank you so much. We will leave timestamps. Or not, we're not, because oh we're God. just... I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to do okay, that. We won't do that. I was thinking for the do other... Do you know how to do that? For the, yeah, yeah, I do for the other oh, video. Oh, okay. I think for the other video, we're going to have to, because we have four categories. But this one, we won't. But regardless, if you made it through... Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for a great year. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you like fell in love with something this year and we, you, we didn't mention it, it's not like a shared love, let us know down below what we need to try next.